Hello there, and welcome to the Tiny Minutes podcast. My name is Laura, and I'm coming to you from Fredericton, New Brunswick, Canada. Hello, Canada. Hello. This is Gus. He's a purebred Labrador Retriever, Golden Lab. I believe in American style. Right? You're an American. Go sit down, please. Oh, careful. This is a mostly knitting uh, podcast. I sprinkle in some crochet and cross stitch and some sewing as well. It's been a little over two weeks since my last episode. I was meant to film on Monday. Today is Wednesday, May 18th. Um, but it has been so gloomy the last few days. It's been raining and just so gray that there was hardly any light in this room. So it would have been just annoying. Oh, pardon me. It would have just been annoying to film and then trying to fix the lighting and stuff. So I just put it off and I was also trying to finish a few things that I didn't even finish, but I also had just a bunch of work to do, so I was doing that. But yeah, if you are new here, welcome. If you are returning, sorry. Uh, yeah, I will start off, I guess, with what I'm wearing. And I'm wearing my Foxberry Pullover and it is by Sorry Nordlin. I knit it, I finished this like a month and a half ago, I think. God, time isn't real, I have no idea. This year, though, and I knitted out of two strands of whole scar and super soft held together. And I have all that information in one of my previous episodes. I can't remember the number of it. But yeah, so it's super nice. It's super lightweight because of the whole scar, even though you're holding two strands together. And I have a couple other cones of holes that I really want to start getting on my needles with some summer garments because I've got, a, I think I have two cones that are like 70% wool, 30% silk, which would be really nice, but it's just carving out the time. But yeah, that is what I'm wearing. Oh, also everything I mention in the podcast will be listed down below in the description box. If you need links or want more information, I'll link it. Yes. Okay. So I have a few finished objects. I actually have five knitting finished objects. Again, like last time though, they're all small and three of them were like half done anyway. And then I have another finished object that I wanted to show you with knitting, which is going to be the next Lord of the Rings colorway that's coming out in June. And then I also have a couple of sewing things to show you, which I will put, to, put, put at the end. Okay. The first finished object I want to show you is something that is the exact same as something I had last time. <laughs> last time I showed you the finished Oslo hat that I had made in my black cherry colorway and that is super great. I haven't cast on the baby one yet, but I'm planning on um, pretty soon because I have, spoiler alert, I have another one on my needles. I'm waiting for that one to be done and off my needles before I start the baby one, but that won't be long now. Anyway, so I cast on another Oslo hat, and this is a pattern by Petite Knit, and you knit it using, I did the mohair version, so it's a strand of fingering and a strand of mohair held together. Sorry, I had a huff mohair on my thing. So yeah, I s finished the one from last time. <laughs> I'm having such a hard time talking. I've been by myself since Monday, and I haven't talked to an actual human, except the FedEx delivery guy this morning, but that was like, uh, good morning. <laughs> Anyway, sorry. This is my second finished Oslo hat. And I knit this using my own hand dyed yarn. And I knit it in my hot lava colorway. And then I held it together with hot lava on mohair. And this is actually from a batch of, I would probably consider it a seconds batch. I had four skeins of mohair that turned out a little bit more on the orange side than the red side and I'm thinking I might list the three because I didn't actually put them on my uh, Etsy shop. Which BT dubs, which I forgot to say, you can find me online as Tiny Human Knits on Instagram, YouTube, Etsy, Ravelry, all that. Um, I'll probably list the three skeins of mohair that came out this color um, as a single listing so if anybody wants a more orangey sort of rusty color then super. Those are the two colors that I used and yeah it's it's super great I knit this one on 3.5 millimeter needles instead of the 3.0 3 millimeter needles that I knit the first one on um, I also used 
I meant the largest size because this is for my boyfriend and he has got a gigantic noggin and I was trying to make it so that it wouldn't be suffocating his brain and it worked it fits him great he's really excited about it to be perfectly honest I think he wears hats weird he pulls them down really low on on his neck like he kind of he pulls them down a lot lower than I would wear them so when he tried this on I asked him if he if he wanted me to make him a hat that had like short row shaving in the back to make it like against his neck and then he kind of looked intrigued so I might be trying to do something like that but it fits him pretty well and he's pretty excited to have it he was actually kind of offended that I took it back to show on the podcast but like he doesn't need a hat right now anyway it's very warm here but yeah that's my first finish object my second finished object is also a pattern by Petite Knit and I do I had this on my needles the last episode so I finished the I think it's the Stockholm sweater junior by Petite Knit and I think I'm pretty sure I did the two to three year size pretty sure Anyway, I'm trying to make a bunch of baby knits. I've explained this before, but there's a ton of people that I know that have little ones and will probably have more little ones in the future. So I'm just trying to like get rid of a bunch of my stash by using baby knit patterns to get them out, which is very effective. But this was knit in an old, it's an older colorway of mine called Love Confetti. And then I held it together with just an undyed, um, mohair silk that I had laying around from leftovers from a project and it is so nice it's got a folded over collar and I actually like this folded over collar better than the one um that was on the Marseille sweater junior because the Marseille sweater she has you um binding off the live stitches and picking up like folding it over and then picking up stitches and binding off as you go this one has you bind off and then sew it down, which I really prefer just because it's not as fiddly and it's just, it's easier to figure out in my opinion. Yeah, it's quite neat. And I did the thing that I always do when it comes to one by one rib, I knit it from the wrong side. So when I picked up the stitches for the collar, I actually just took a really long length of the tail of the yarn so that I could pick up the stitches with the tail and then when it was time to knit I turned it inside out and then used the, the strand from the ball um, so I didn't have to do any weird turnings because you want to pick up from the right side but I always knit my one by one from the wrong side because my pearls in one by one knitting are tighter than my knits um, so it just looks a lot neater so as an example I suppose I've mentioned this before but I'm just reiterating for anyone who might be new and maybe this is something they never thought of doing so this is my one by one rib from technically the wrong side. So this is the right side of the, the garment, but I knit this inside out. So this is from the wrong side. And then that is from the right side. So it just, it's neater. So when I was doing the body, I always, when I get to the point of doing the ribbing, I just do a German short row, turn it around, and then start doing my one by one rib from there. And I do the same thing for the sleeves. But if you're doing a collar, you wanna pick up stitches, I just use the tail of the yarn, make sure it's nice and long, pick it up, and then you don't have to do anything awkward with it. Hope that helps anyone. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I actually wanted to say too, my pearls are only tighter when I'm doing ribbing. It's not the same. When I'm knitting flat, I don't get any like unevenness. My, my tension is the same because if I'm just doing purl stitches, my tension is the same. But if I'm keeping switching from knits to purls, that's where, <clears throat> that's where it tightens. So if yours are the same, you might not have to worry about rowing out, I think is what they call it. Anyway, that was a long-winded way of saying that. But yeah, that one's done. It is so soft. And I'm just remembering now that I did not use mohair. I used Surrey alpaca, which I prefer. <laughs> yes, it's Surrey silk, not mohair, which I do prefer. I think it's softer. That is my second finished object. <laughs> Whenever I'm filming these, I always feel like I'm talking so fast and making no sense, but then when I watch it back, I'm like, oh yeah, actually that's fine. 
you're fine. But I do apologize. I, again, haven't talked to anyone. I've been working for a few hours already, and I'm just, I'm jazzed. Okay, so the next four finished objects that I'm going to show you, the, the fourth one wasn't actually finished since I last spoke to you. It was done before, but I haven't shown it yet. Um, they're all socks, though. So I've got an embarrassing amount of single socks because when I make new colorways for my shop, because I do self-striping uh, sock yarn, I had, before this year, I should say, I had a habit of knitting one sock as a sample and then never getting around to the second sock. Or if I did, it was quite surprising because I just never had the time and I was constantly making samples. But this year I decided that when I made a new colorway, I had to knit both socks before the release of a new colorway. And that's actually worked out pretty good. I think there's only been one or two colorways that I haven't finished the sock for. Um, also, side note, I don't actually wear socks that often, <laughs> so I have, I think, 21 pairs of, full pairs of socks that I haven't worn yet. It's kind of a shame, really. I've actually finished 14 pairs of socks this year. <sighs> the life of a sock yarn dyer. Anyway, anyway, sorry. So. This is a collection of colorways that I made last summer. Uh, I think I released them on the first day of summer. And I've had the single socks just on like a little pegboard thing in my office since then. And I've just, I keep meaning to make the full pair so that I can have the full pair. So I knit three of them. There was four colorways in this collection and I knit three so that they have a full pair. So each of the next three socks already had a sock, so I only knit one of the socks. Say that. Anyway, so this is my kiwi color. This is from the fruit salad collection, by the way. This is my kiwi color. Colorway. And yeah, there's it's nothing to write home about. I've said this before. Um, I just knit the one sock. I did a lot of walking last week, so I love to knit socks while I'm walking. It's really effective for me to like get get it done really quickly. Um, 60, nope, not 60 stitches. These I did 58, 58 stitches. <clears throat> um, I cast on with 60 and then after the ribbing I decreased by two on the back so that I have 58 and then when I get to the toe do you know what? Actually, this is something else I've thought about. So I've been watching, I watch a ton of knitting podcasts. It's one of my favorite things to do when I'm working because it keeps me engaged and doesn't let me like get bored with what I'm doing. Um, but I've heard a lot of people talk about how many rows they do after their heel. And so they say like, oh, after their heel is done, they do. And I've heard so many people say like 60 to 65 rows and before they do their toe and I'm just wondering if any of you out there are like have done a pretty decent amount of socks or know like how many rows you need after you heal before your toe could you please tell me because like my row gauge and I know this I've known this for a while my row gauge is tight so when someone says that they do 65 rows before their toe I'm like that would never fit me ever if I knit that way because I have, from after my heel to the first row of decreases for the toe, I do 78 rows. So, yes. If you could let me know that, I would be very interested to know. Because I've always just thought that was very interesting. Because it seems like most people are in the 60s. I am not. Very tight row gauge. I think that's why I like drop shoulder um, sweaters. Because they, they do by measurement, not by rows. It's what I need. My row gauge is tight. Just is. Anyway, this is Kiwi. The next one is my banana colorway. And this is one of my favorites. Also, these I must have... I must have done something different because they all end on like a, a little bit of the... A anyway, my rose. 
this is banana, and this is watermelon. I honestly have a hard time thinking about whether I prefer banana or watermelon, but I don't know if I'd be able to pick. I love this colorway. I'm going to try to have a few sets of these in my shop over the summer because I, I love them so much and I just think they're cute. Yeah, watermelon. So I had one more in the colorway collection and that was cantaloupe. Um, I will do a second sock for cantaloupe, but it was by far the least popular color in that group by like a lot. People don't like filler melons, I suppose. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. Okay, so I want to show you one more sock finished object because this is going to be the Lord of the Rings colorway for June. And so it's going to be the last one for sure. Um, I decided kind of actually earlier today that next year I want to do the two towers and then I'll do the Return of the King in 2024. Is that a real year? 2024 but I have decided I'm only going to do four months so it won't be as much you know going into the summer I'm kind of like wanting to do summery colors and kind of weirdly Halloween colorways as well but uh, yeah so the next two collections will only have four colorways I think as far as it stands right now but anyway this is the last one for the fellowship of the ring and it is called Be at Peace, Son of Gondor. And that is that. It is a Boromir themed pair of socks. Themed? I'm trying to think. It's like a tribute. Tribute to Boromir. And I've actually started, I'm dyeing these up right now, actually. I've got those going in the oven. It'll take me you know, five days to do it, but anyway, it doesn't matter. So these will be available, I think it's the 3rd of June at 1 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time, same as always. And yes, those are my finished objects. I have a few sewing finished objects, but I think I'll have that in my its own section at the end just because I know not everybody's into sewing. So I'll save that till the end and move right along to my works in progress. So I have a few, I'm trying to think if they're all new from last time. I kind of think they are. Okay, so I start, I'll start with this one. I started, no, did I have my pavement? Sorry, sorry. I have my pavement sweater. I might've had that started last time, but I can't remember. Um, yes, so I'm knitting the pavement by Vera Mal Valimaki. I'm, I'm using my own hand-dyed yarn very boring all of my stuff is hand my hand dyed yarn which is a real shame because I have so much stash that I'm trying to get through that I keep like it's every single one of them on my own yes it is yeah all of them are it's fine anyway so I decided I was going to like plug on through this one because I kind of lost interest pretty quickly after I started this um, but I'm determined to get it done because there are so many other things that I want to cast on that need four millimeter needles and I need, I don't want to keep just taking them off this project. Anyway, so I did a bunch of stockinette. It's very boring. But I got to the point, so I set aside two skeins for this, but I had a third skein that I'm using for another project that I'll probably have some leftovers for. So I wanted to get this to the point where I had um, used up an entire skein, do the sleeves. So I just need to pick up the sleeves and knit those first. So I have enough, cause I'm, I'm a pretty short person. I'm only five foot two and I've got a really short torso. So I don't need it to be as long as it is in the pattern. Cause I think it's a little bit too long for me personally. Um, so I'm just going to knit the sleeves and then I'll use the rest of the ball that I have set aside that I'll be using for sleeves. Use that all up and then when it's to the point where I'm almost done that one, I'll start doing the short row shaping at the bottom and then I'll use the leftovers from the other project to do the bottom hem. I hope that made sense. But yeah, it's just a bunch of straight stockinette. 
it's quite fun to do just straight talking that because I usually watch like an anime or something um but yeah so I got to the end of that ball hairs on it and now I just need to do the sleeves which is what's coming next but the other project that has another skein and this is the evergreen colorway by the way um I cast on another Oslo hat because <laughs> it's a great way to show the colorway with mohair held together but it's again evergreen covered in dog hair on my fingering weight base and then evergreen on my mohair base and I started this like two days ago and I don't know what it is about the Oslo hat but I knit it so quickly but um, yeah so I'm just using however much I'm using three millimeter needles for this one as well because I wanted the tighter gauge and I don't have as big of a head as my boyfriend <laughs> although I do have a bigger than average head apparently um, yes so I'm using three millimeters needles but I'm knitting it on the large size instead of the medium size which is what I did last time and after I had blocked the last one it did fit but it was still a little bit tight so just going up four stitches is going to be plenty enough breathing room and yeah so I'm just to the point I have like three more rows before I do the switch to knitting it inside out or right side out depending and then also the bottom down but this will be done by next time for sure and then I'll probably have like 40 grams from this ball of evergreen to go into my pavement sweater which is great Not much to say about that. Again, it's a hat that I knit a couple times already. You're probably getting bored of it. Uh, I apologize. It's a great pattern. Thanks. Okay, my third whip is actually something I cast on so that I wouldn't just have whips that were in the same color. <laughs> it's a good reason, I think. But I cast this on the other day. I haven't got much of it done, to be perfectly honest. Um, it's not my main priority right now, but it'll be ready to go once my other projects are done, which is awesome. But I cast on the Rocket Tee by Tannis Lavely, and I am using my own hand-dyed yarn. Yeah. Okay, so quick. It's a t-shirt that has stripes of a fingering weight and then a mohair, and it looks so delightfully light and airy, and for my size, and I think for quite a few sizes, you only need one skein of each. So that's to have a garment with only one skein of fingering and then one skein of mohair is fantastic. But I am knitting it out of my cupcake colorway. This is a new colorway that came out the last um, shop update. And then I just grabbed a skein of uh, Gilly on mohair because I thought they looked pretty cute together. And so, it's literally just cast on. Not much going on at all. I've just got two stripes. I'm now on the fingering weight again. And it's curling up. And I have to say, this is also, no, this is 3.75 millimeter, which was nice, because I wasn't using those. Um, I have to say, not a big fan of the mohair rows, particularly. I feel like I have to concentrate on them really hard, but I think it's going to be really cute. There's a couple other of her patterns that I, I'm really interested in. I can't remember. There's another t-shirt of hers that has just like a little bit of contrasting stripes of uh, mohair at the top, and I've got some Pearl Soho Pure Silk that I might want to use for a project like that, because I've got some black mohair as well. It's in black. It's actually right here. I was thinking of using this and then a black mohair as the accent because I think that would be super cute. If you've ever bought the Pearl Soho Pure Silk, it smells like wax grounds. It's very strange. Yeah, I've got two skins of that, but I would only need one for sure. And yeah, I just, I really like how even just this amount is looking. I think it's going to be really nice. So I'm actually surprised at how many summery garments I'm making must just be something in the air or the ridiculous humidity that's here oh it's humid it is humid and I'm not used to it at all 
that's all for my works in progress. Um, I've got another thing that I want to cast on soon, or like a million things. So many things. I've never had such a drive to cast on things as I have right now. And I don't know if it's because I'm in the mood for casting on a lot of things, or it's just because I don't have any time. So I'm trying to like <laughs> overcompensate. But either way. I didn't work on my cross stitch at all, which is a shame. But I'm hoping to, after I get my next drop update prep done, I should have more time for that, hopefully. Um, but I do have a few sewing things. So this is now sewing. So if you're not interested in that, totally get it. It's not for everybody. But I have a finished object, an almost finished object, and another almost finished object. So I there's this pattern that I have made a shirt for my boyfriend before. I will I can't remember. It's a McCall's something. I will link it in the description box below. It is a fantastic like just button up shirt pattern. I have made it now three times. No. Twice, but I have another one cut out and started. So kind of three times. Um, it's super easy to understand. The instructions are really clear. It, to me, again, I have maybe a little bit more like just general knowledge of sewing than your average bear before I started. Um, but I think it's still pretty easy to follow. Anyway, it is my calls button up shirt pattern. And I really like it. So we were at the fabric store the other day getting some fabric for uh, some reupholstery. My boyfriend is um, refurbishing an old car. Don't ask me anything about it. I don't know. <laughs> and um, we were at the store and they had the sale on because it's I it was just Fabricville that we went to. And they had a sale. They always do. But on this particular line of fabric, it was a really lightweight. I can't remember what the fabric content is but it was buy one meter get two free so that was a pretty good deal because these shirts only take two to three meters depending on what size and if you want to do long sleeve or short sleeve so i got him to pick out a couple of colors because so cheap and it ended up being 33 dollars for three like shirt quantities which is great but this is the first one and i will tell you the fabric is a pain in the arse but this is what it looks like. If I don't know if this is going to show up really well. I might do a flat lay and then show you. He's got the cuffs all curled up. He's already worn this. Or tried to. It's really long. <laughs> I need to shorten it. I'll shorten the next one. But yeah, so I added snaps to it because it's his preferred closure type. The last one I made I had to put buttons because the button band ended up being so thick that I couldn't actually get snaps through it. But I had him um, tighten the snaps because I'm, I must have weak hands or something. I can never tighten snaps enough so that they actually stay on and they end up popping off. Anyway. But yeah, added snaps. And I just think this pattern, it just, it's so simple and I mean, there are a lot of fiddly bits and general knowledge is best, but if you're going to make a shirt, this pattern is fantastic. And I actually have some flannel that I got for myself to make myself sort of like a jacket version of it in the same size, just so it's nice and oversized. It's like a mint plaid. It's beautiful. And it's got a pocket. And you start with the pocket and it just kind of starts you off and gets the ball rolling. It's got a collar stand that I didn't know was hard when I first made this project. Um, it's kind of like how some people talk about brioche. If, if no one tells you brioche is difficult, then it's just another thing you have to do. So I'd never done a collar stand before, and so I just did it because I was following the instructions. But yeah, this, this fabric has one of the... Um, I don't know if it's one of the warp stripes or the weft, I'm not entirely sure. But one of them has a thread in it that rumples when you iron it, which when you were like actually doing it was annoying, but it, it, it evens out after a while. Anyway, I really liked it. I've got two different um, fabric lots. Oh, and I also added one of these um, tags that I got from, I got it from an Etsy shop, but it's a Kylie and the Machine label. 
And I got these for my boyfriend specifically, this one, uh, because he always calls all of his handmaids bespoke. Because he has now two handmade shirts and six sweaters from me. He's a knit-worthy fella. But yeah, super great. I've got another one that's sort of, I think, blues and grays uh, plaid that I'm going to do a long sleeve. And then we have another one that's like crazy colorful plaid. It's got like bright pink and blue and green. And we're doing a short sleeve version for that one for the summer. And I'm shortening them because for some reason this one turned out two inches longer than the last one I made. I think it's the fabric might have stretched. But I'm not entirely sure. So my next thing is almost finished. Actually, my next two things are almost finished. Um, the first one is... Oh, I've got some gathering stitches. So I had this shirt. It's for myself. I had it cut out. I kind of think before we moved. Either before we moved or like since we moved. But I am kind of think it's before we moved. Um, I have... I'm really good at cutting out patterns and then leaving them forever. So if I were to ever meet someone who really liked sewing things together but hated cutting them out, be a dream team. I do this with um, quilts all the time. I do a bunch of cutting out of quilts because I know when it comes to the point where I want to put together a quilt, I don't want to have to take the time to cut them out. So I'll like bulk cut them out, put them away, and then when I want to get to it, then it's ready for me. But I do this with patterns. I have got three dresses and a skirt cut out and I just pile them all up and I put them in the closet. So yeah, this has been cut out for at least, I want to say, eight months. And it's the, I think it's called the Ada top. And this is what it looks like. Again, it's kind of one of those bigger things that are hard to show. Oh my goodness. So I sewed this out of some, it's called handkerchief linen. So it's a really lightweight, airy linen. Super nice to wear. Super nice to wear. And actually, kind of adorably, um, I apparently, when I was cutting it out, had only cut out one of the back collar pieces. So you're supposed to cut out two because you sandwich them together and then you make it all tidy. And I only cut out one. So I had to find, I'm pretty, I have no idea what happened. I don't think there was anything left of this fabric. So I had to find a different fabric to use as the back collar, the inside of the back collar. So I just grabbed some leftover fabric from a bin in my office, in my sewing room. And I managed to get... So this is what it looks like on the back collar, and I managed to get where it says happily ever after, right, where there would be a tag, which I think is super cute. I have to pink the edges yet too. Um, anyway, the reason that it's not done done is that I kind of have a feeling that it's too long on me, and I think it might be something that I tuck a lot, and I don't want that much fabric sort of bunching up when I tuck it in. And also the back hem, this fabric, I either need to re-hem it because there's some wonky bits. This fabric did not like being ironed at all. It got super stiff just because of the linen quality. So the back hem sort of has a weird little flare at the bottom, which might be fine. I don't know, but I haven't decided yet. And so it's also, it's buttoned up, but you can sew, the instructions say you can sew buttons straight through both layers of the button band because it's big enough that you can pull it over your head, which I can. Um, so I haven't sewn the buttons on yet because I don't know if I'm going to re-hem it or not, but I have just basted down the button bands together so that I can sew the buttons on without it being faff. Which is why it's an almost finished garment. And I, it's just so lovely. I finished it... Like, I got it to this point, and I actually put it on, and then kind of forgot I was wearing it and wore it for, like, three hours before I was like, oh, wait, I'm not done that yet. <laughs> so it's super nice. I like it a lot. So that is almost done, and I think that'll be absolutely fantastic when it comes to summer wear. And the next thing that's almost done is my Christmas Joy quilt that I was making in my last episode. I was trying to get it done for this episode, or the quilt off anyway, but it's just... The, 
I ran out of the sashing fabric and I, I knew I didn't have, pardon me, I knew I didn't have enough in the first place, but I have some other fabric that's kind of the same thing, but slightly different colors. So I'm trying to decide like which sort of sashing pattern I'm going to use with these slightly different colored ones. But I finished all of the blocks. This is one of the strips. There's six of these strips. But I finished all of the blocks and I have them in their strips with the sashing. Which, if you're unfamiliar, sashing is the strips of fabric that go in between the blocks. And I have these all sewn together. So I just need to iron them and then make the sashing strips that go in between. And then I'll have enough of the sashing color in this to do in between. It's the outside edges that I'm gonna have to be a bit more creative with, I think. And yeah, I have enough of that. I just have to decide. But yeah, I think it's really nice. It's a lot more colorful than my last one. And flowery, which is why I like um, floral fabric. So yeah, I've got this that I want to finish, I think this week, because I have, I'm going to be mailing this one to my mother-in-law right away to do some long arm quilting on. Um, I have two other finished quilt tops that are just sitting and I'm not really in a hurry for them. I might try to quilt them myself. <laughs> Won't be good. Anyway, because I want to mail this because it's my nephew's first birthday next week and I want to send something in the parcel for... Um, his mom and for him as well so in the same parcel so I just I want to get this done so I can mail that out right away but yeah I'm pretty happy with it I've got some other sewing projects that I want to finish <clears throat> that was Gus you're right there bubs you okay but yeah, I want to finish this so I can get some other stuff done and then I just I just want to clear that room out a little bit I've got too many projects on the go and too many projects that I want to have on the go. But yeah, that's all for sewing. That's all for everything. Um, I might just a little bit, I want, just want to quickly show what I'm planning on casting on next after I'm done all of these other things. And I'm going to be casting on the Marseille sweater, like the adult size by Petite Knit because I dyed these colors and I think they're super cute. They're very like varsity autumn, so I wanna have it done, you know, obviously for autumn, which here is in like October, which is weird. But I dyed this, it's like a double, double strength black cherry. I haven't figured out a name yet. It'll probably be called like plum or something like that. So it's on my tweed base, my DK tweed. And then I dyed some caramel to go with it. So these are going to be the stripes and this is going to be the main color and I just think that's going to look so cute. So I just wanted to put that out there like some accountability if I cast on something else besides this please give me a smack. Please and thanks. That would be great. I also ordered the newest edition of the Lina magazine because oh, every time someone posted about it it just looked so... I've never seen a line of magazine where I wanted to cast on so many of the things in it. So I ordered that the other day after a couple days of thinking about it, but I also ordered a few um, extra tips for my Addy interchangeable needle set uh, in 4mm and 5mm because I have cast on it just real bad. So just be easier. But yeah, I think that might be everything for this time. So I've got to dye a lot more yarn. I've got a lot more yarn to dye. I'm dyeing up, so for the next update, I'll be dyeing up the Lord of the Rings colorway, and then I'll also be having a ton more of the candy-coated sock sets in the shop. I'm going to be dyeing an excess amount of that because it was very popular and there was a lot of people who wanted it, so I'm gonna be having quite a bit of that in the shop again. So in case you were wondering, that's what's it. But yeah, I will see you guys in two or so weeks. And until next time, I hope you have a lovely day. Goodbye.